So I kind of knew what I was getting myself into with this one. Uh, I bought it off eBay, sold as broken. I knew the cartridge port was in trouble, uh, but I didn't really know the full extent of the damage to this console. So we've a rather special patient today. Um, Mega Drive uh, Model 1, uh, the high definition model, the release model. Um, so that was screws floating around in there. I don't think it's got RF shields. You can see it's got the the uh, DB9 or the, is it a 9? I don't know. Yeah, it's got that connection on it. Case is in okay um, condition. The um, volume control button is missing but I can fix that. It's got a bit of a gash here. Um, some shots of that. You can see there it's got a fairly decent sized gash there. Um, I won't be able to get rid of that but I will be able to uh, uh, ports look fairly beat up as well. Yeah those ports look not great they're gonna need cleaning and such. So uh, let's get it open. Um, and see what is going on. Yeah, I notice it's got its uh, power connector. I can't see it. Okay, let's open it up and see what's going on inside. Radio. Um, I don't think there's an RF shield on the top. There is one on the bottom. What butchery did they do? Let's have a look. There's screws falling out everywhere here. That's motherboard screw. Oh dear God. Oh dear God. What are these? Let's get some light on it. So first of all, you can see our cartridge port has had uh, a visitor. Um, there's been a spill in the back here. Um, the whole board is filthy. Um, someone cut the LED switches out. Um, there's a capacitor just floating around here. Um, its legs are back there. Um, there's another crushed capacitor here. Um, yeah, the fuses have been, uh, I think they're fuses, they are fuses, have been just kind of pushed together there. There's a switch, looks, like why? There's an, why cut that cable? I suppose that's the least of the worries. Um, okay, let's, let's get this board out and see what we can do. God damn. It's an absolute battle zone. There's crushed capacitors. I don't know what happened to this board. It looks like someone stood on it. Kicked the... Frosty! I mean, they've ripped out capacitors. They've just totally abuse this board. What's going on over here? The RF shield is all out of whack. Hopefully the uh, regulators aren't completely dead. 
My god. Okay, so let's get it out of the case. Let's get it out, see what we can do. Why cut the LED? Is the LED still there? Yeah, look, the LED is still there. Um, I don't know what they've done. I mean, I can fix that. It's just a dupe point connection. But they've completely... They've completely... Puffy! Sorry for the cursing. Uh, okay, so... Oh my god, even the stereo jack has been cut. Why? Why do you cut a Puffy! stereo jack? There's going to be a lot of crimping, that's for Puffy! sure. Um... I don't even know what's going to happen once I delve in here. I'm going to have to desolder this, obviously, but, like, has there been traces ripped up in the process of whatever kind of stuff was going on here? Why cut these? Yeah, this is, first of all, going to be just a desolder job. Okay. Oh my god, the clock! I do not fucking believe it. What? And the Z80. Clock. Puffy! A clock crystal has been clipped out. Or just bashed the Puffy! F out. What the Puffy! clock? Jesus. Holding on to that. Because, yeah, what kind of animal got at this system? Oh. It's like they leave one screw in then. Jesus. Hopefully this could, system can be saved, because uh, hopefully they haven't. They've completely bent this. They didn't even realise that this has to be unscrewed from the bottom. Jesus. Who the hell went at this? And I'm surprised it actually has the cover on the extension port. That's insane. I'm, oh, I must check the top of the RF box to see if the screw has been taken out of there or did they just rip it out? They were levering here, you can see the z eighty's got like chips in the um in the case. Okay, I'm gonna bring this board outside, um dust it off because I can't really see with all the filth what's going on here. So, needless to say, I got rid of the soldering station and I have a nice clean desoldering station ready to go um this board is an absolute bit um i just want to get a close-up shot of so i mean underneath you can see where they've leveraged uh up the cart edge they've uh removed the solder mask um that can be fixed, um, I just to make sure none of those traces are shorted. Um, over here by the Zilog, you can see there was some leveraging going on here. It got the crap knocked out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start desoldering components and I'm going to keep a list. Um, I think most of these are 47 UF. I'm going to have to look up a, um, a map. Yeah, I'm going to have to look up a, a, a map for this board so that I can get the right capacitor values because these guys are just kind of floating around there. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, most of the capacitors in this board are going to have to come off. Um, I'm going to have to do something about these kind of fuses are very kind of close together. Um, some of them are completely crushed. Yeah, but, you know, let me fire up the the desoldering station and uh, we'll get cracking. Yeah, I'm just going to continue making a job list and I'm going to make a capacitor list. So as I pull a cap off, I'll write down the number, etc. Um, once everything's desoldered, uh, I'm just going to start cleaning the board and examine uh, trace damage and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, they just... Who removes a clock, like, and just leaves the crystal sitting in there? And I can even see that there's, like, scratches and... Just wherever they were leveraging stuff, levering stuff. Someone really didn't like this Mega Drive and just showed it no love whatsoever. It is like it got hit by a bomb. But anyways, enough of that. I'm going to start uh, desoldering stuff. So that's the uh, destroyed cartridge port, butchered cartridge port removed. Um, there doesn't appear to be any damage from my work, <laughs> at least. Um, I'll try and get a good shot of this. Put on some light. Um, You can see there, there's some trace damage there from whoever levered at the cartridge edge to make those cuts. I'd say they did that with a, a wire cutters. I don't know why. There's a strong smell of aftershave off the unit. Um, I suspect this was done an act of passion. Um, someone destroyed this. I'm thinking maybe a bunny boiler incident. Someone playing too much with their Mega Drive and not giving their significant other the attention they deserve. But also, you can see here, which appears to be some kind of crack. There it is. You can see those traces have been compromised but they should be easy enough to fix so uh we're good for capacitors the clock so i'm gonna have to look up the clock um i may reach out on twitter and see if anyone knows the exact clock uh crystal the part number um uh, which goes there <laughs> they were so kind as to rip it out um we're gonna have to crimp up some cables um I'll make up a new one of these leads. Uh, we have to straighten this. You can see it's at a funny angle. Um, someone had tried to rip it out. Um, that's why I say this is kind of like the product of a of a a bunny boiler because it reeked of aftershave. So my guess is they poured aftershave in to try and kill it. Um, that didn't work, because aftershave is mostly alcohol, um, so it's non-conductive and stuff. Um, and then they went in with pliers and just started going to town on um, anything their eyes were set on. Um, so you can see, like, that's why all this stuff was ripped out and kind of treated really badly. You can see the leverage marks um, there. So I'm just going to get some shots of all this.
So yeah, you can see the damage traces there. There's uh, more damage traces over here. Um, flip it around there. Um, you can see more damage traces there. Um, interesting enough, <coughs> because you can see that was bent, um, they actually did manage to bend the board. So if I come over here, you can see the warp there. So, um, fortunately enough, I think that's just the ground plane, um, but it's on both sides. So hopefully they haven't done too much damage there. Yeah, because this was definitely destroyed as an act of passion. Um, because whoever did it, like it still reeks, even though I cleaned it down with alcohol, it still reeks aftershave. And, um, whoever decided to hurt this board didn't really know what they were doing. Just as well. Um, I think it is repairable. But, like, you can see in areas where they did, you can see it on, like, kind of the, on the hazel and stuff where it's warped from someone. Just trying to destroy it. So, the date code on the board is 1990-171-58-72-20. So I think this is um, the release console. Um, it has... Um, I don't know, you get these where they have two of these ASICs, whereas here you have three chips. Not quite sure. I think some of this was cons consolidated into another chip in later revisions. Yeah, there's clearly traces broken there. So I have ordered a crystal oscillator um, for the board. Now, unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's the Gen uh, Genesis clock frequency, so it's the NTSC version of the clock, which will not really make a difference. So you can see I've exposed a lot of the copper there, so I can start uh, uh, repairing some of those traces. Um, exactly on the other opposite side of the board as well. Like I'll be able to do it on the surface there, maybe with some wire that I'll just uh, um, pull the insulation off and just kind of uh, put tr use it as kind of traces on top of the old broken ones. Some of those just need solder, they'll be fine, but two or three of them need full-on trace repair. Um, on the bottom side, um, literally underneath that, you can see there's a crack there. And I've scraped away by those uh, vias. And because it's the bottom of the board, I'm just going to run down to the corresponding vias down here um, by the edge connection. So I'm just going to follow them down um, and I'll just uh, put maybe how many five wires there um, to connect those up. Um, and I'll try and write them, route them fairly kind of neatly um, down to their corresponding vias over here or indeed if they're just going to the cart edge um, I'll just expose some of the copper uh, in from the cart edge. I'll use like uh, some nice thin uh, 30 gauge stuff um, yeah that's the same stuff I'm going to take the insulation off on the other side to do the trace repair. I was going to use component legs um, here on this damage but they're just too the diameter is too wide so um, yeah the 30 gauge wire without the insulation should do the job there um, once I've cleaned it up I'm going to do a little bit more kind of poking around there with my craft knife and kind of exposing a bit more copper get it ready for um, so the solder bonds well to it um, I'm going to do some clean up there's also a trace down here by the Zilog that needs patching that's cut um, but this is the main impact area um, where the board was definitely hit with something um, with enough force to crack it on the other side but yeah uh, once those traces are repaired I can then start thinking about replacing components but um, yeah I'm not going to put any new components on the board until I fix those sites and uh, there potentially could be other sites um, once I start poking around but uh, we won't know that until I have another look. So you can see the um, oh, 
you can see the um, trace repair there. Um, that was a pain in the ass. I had to like take the insulation of 30 gauge wire and like coax it into position and just let surface tension uh, in the solder and just kind of keep it where I needed it. Yeah, it was a pain in the ass, but it's done. Um, the traces are repaired. Um, the other side should be a lot easier because we're just going to go with bodge wires. Um, yeah, I'll test everything out again at, before I clean things up. But yeah, a bit of isopropyl alcohol and uh, the traces should be good again. The um, next one I'm going to do before I go on to the other side is this one by the Zylog. Um, which I'm going to guess is going to be a pain in the ass. But you know what, it can, it's doable. We can get it done. So I've got my bodge wires kind of set and ready to go to solder to the other ends. Um, I just kind of got them neatly together and just put dabs of um, super glue um, just to hold the wires together neatly. Um, it's something I've seen Lord Voltaire do so um, I said I'd give it a go here in this repair to try and make it look nice and neat. So I've just taped down the end for now. I'm going to walk away. Um, let the glue set a bit and when I come back I'll uh, terminate the other ends of the connections. So here you go, here's the bodge wires. Um, about as neat as I could get them. Um, I still have a bit of clean up to do but I'm going to wait for um, until I just have a quick look around the board see if there's any other damaged traces but I think we got most sites. Um, so that's that side. Um, back over here so um, on that area there um, once I clean it with alcohol, um, I think I'm just going to seal up those repairs with um, clear nail polish. I'm not going to bother with solder mask. Um, I don't want to hide the fact that I've done repairs here. If anyone opens it in the future, they'll know that it's been through the wars and gotten some TLC. So yeah, um, yeah. take a quick break and then I'll come back with some alcohol. So yeah, I've got the new cartridge edge connector kind of just basically soldered in there and two anchor points. Uh, I'm going to finish soldering that. Um, we'll get the capacitors in. There's one capacitor I don't know the value of. I'll have to look up online, but I know the values of all the others. So we have a new cart edge on. Excellent. It's already starting to look a bit more like a Mega Drive. Um, I straightened up the heat sink. And I also did the trace repair. Um, see if I can get a good shot of it here now on just by the Zylog there you can see the little bit of wire and uh, yeah it's got some clear nail polish over it then just to seal everything up so what I've done is you can see here I've crimped up a new connection a new DuPont connection on the board uh, for both power and the LED and um, I've also got a bit of ribbon cable and hooked up this um, Shame I didn't do that slightly differently. I could have done that with a really short, um, maybe I'll come back to it, maybe I'll put pin headers on there and do another connection for that. Um, depending on how, how often that those joints are flexed, they might break. I doubt it. They're fairly decent, they're fairly well soldered, but yeah, I might get a better mechanical connection on that. But yeah, I mean... Okay, it doesn't look stock, it's got different cables and that, but it definitely looks a lot better than it did. Um, i got all the capacitors on there. This is similar to the launch console in Japan in that this is one solid piece of plastic that runs the entire uh, perimeter here. It's not like la later models where you can pop this out and easily put in a new LED. Um, that was my first thought when I was going to redo the LED, but no, I had to kind of put the wires in place. So that's why I gave them extra length so that when people open it, they don't yank, um, they don't yank any of the connections. The volume control doesn't have the the thing on top. Now I have um, an Asian Mega Drive, a Japanese Mega Drive that it's fairly well beat up. Um, case is in great shape, so I might take the volume knob off that. The thing with it though is that they're plastic welded so that can be messy, you have to be careful uh, when you're prying apart plastic wells that you don't destroy the thing you're trying to salvage so yeah, um, I would worry about that once I get the clock uh, installed and I have it up and running but other than that, I mean it's nearly a Mega Drive again guys. So, um, I kind of 
couldn't wait any longer for the uh, clocks to arrive, so I have a different Mega Drive and bench here. Um, this is the Asian one uh, I talked about earlier. Yeah, I'm going to take off the... Uh, oh, it's PAL as well, so the clock is matching. It's an Asian PAL system. Yeah, so I'm going to take the clock off this one. I'll just get it out of the place and desolder it. So this mightn't be a great idea. Um, in the sense that uh, these clocks can often be or so, as os oscillators um, can often be affected by heat. Um, clock crystals. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, PIM 1 is fairly well marked. But considering the other is a PAL system, put a PAL clock on it to test it. Um, mightn't be a bad idea um, and we can also uh, see what it's like uh, when we put on the NTSC crystals. Um, frequency is the only difference, the only marginally different in the frequency. So are we up to temperature here? 330! Yeah, we'll give it a go. Um, should be alright. On there for a sec. Wiggle and pull the trigger. That should be good. Hold on for a sec. I think the leads will be long enough to reapply anyways. On there for a sec. Wiggle. They should fold straight out. do now is just poke those legs, see if they move. Some movement in that. Not as much there. That one's holding. So let me just see. Yeah, the whole thing's moving there, so. That can could be quite hot on the clock now, so I have to be careful grabbing it. Nah, no, it's only lukewarm. Yep, yeah, I think we're doing good. Here we go. There we go, our crystals soldered in. Alright, we've got our crystal transplanted from the other board. Um, that came from a Japanese PAL system. I believe an Asian PAL anyways. Um, so, rather than hook it up to a TV and see if we get anything, um, first what I'd like to do is... Uh, Get the power plugged in and check my voltages just once more. Yeah, I'm going to take the headset off for now. Just for the duration of the smoke test and then once uh, there's no smoke, I'll uh, test the voltages. All right, um, as you can see, the LED came on. LED came up. So now I'm going to turn it off again. Right here. Now, 
the moment of truth. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, start poking around at voltages. So, uh, volts DC. Four point five, four point nine one, eight volts, four point nine three, and in around eight volts. So, I think we're okay. I think it's time to test it out. Um, so let me rearrange things here. I'll probably have to do this on the other camera. Mega Drive hooked up. OSSC test screen. Let's power this thing on. Oh baby! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna turn it off briefly and it looks awesome so we can check audio. So, okay, I have the speakers plugged in now, so let's check this. <laughs> Come on, Sonic. Sweet. <laughs> <Toasty. laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh, Sonic, you little blue bastard, we did it. Reset. Oh, <laughs> stoked. Frickin' stoked. So, guys, I got uh, Streets of Rage 2 in there. Uh, test screen is up. I've plugged in the 8-bit doo-doo, <laughs> the 8-bit do controller. Uh, we're going to give this a go and um, see if it works. Um, I might have to sync it, but we'll see. I'll try capturing it on the PC as well. But uh, let's hit this up and see. Hopefully it comes up straight away. Should do. Yes. I'm just going to put you guys down for a sec. I'm going to just fire up uh, the capture. This is a Mega Drive. There we go. Start recording. So guys, the Mega Drive lives again uh, to fight another day. It's not going to win any beauty contests. I mean, um, you can see there's like scuffs in and around the kind of 16-bit logo and there's that big gash there. Um, I didn't bother transplanting the the button here yet. Um, I may do that sometime in the near future. But uh, yeah, it's good. You get kind of a buzz when you get something like this working again. Um, considering whoever 
destroyed it in the first place. Um, did it with a lot of passion, maybe a lot, a lot of rage, a lot of hate. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> so it was good that it was showing a bit of love and, and that it's working again. Uh, just goes to show you, uh, in the future, after the apocalypse, um, cockroaches are going to be playing Mega Drives. Take care, guys. Chat to you all again. Thank you.